I'm on this news story covering the folks that, that pick up truck and all that. Did, did I hear you right? Did you say that you you um, went by the house that uh, where they found the the, uh, the suspect? I went by the house where the hus the suspect stays. I did, you know, did, you see the su house, did you see the suspect there? Well, what I actually saw, Charles, was two guys, one of them wearing a hoodie for sure, and when we began getting in the yard, he took off and ran in the house. The news article said that he was apprehended on Spring Street. That was on Spring Street where we are, where we were. Oh, I got you. Wow. So, I mean, at the time... Yeah, I didn't know it was a murder, but I do. Every, everybody was talking about uh, the folks in that uh, in that uh, location putting a water hose on you while the police were there. The guy was being had been involved in a murder in Ridgeway. Yeah. Wow! So you're you're saying was it? And I never will forget it because the, the mother of this guy, mother of this guy, was out how the hell did he get the hose so he could spray it on me? I mean, if the mother is helping, you know. You know, helping out, then you know you got problems, right? Correct. And that's, you know, when people uh, began calling me, texting me, giving me information, that's exactly what they remember. They said, yep. it is the same house where Charles was hosed down. I didn't know it was a murder. They didn't bring that up. But, I mean, everybody in the area saw you get hosed down on television. Yeah, and I never will forget there was a, a, an officer there that said, if you weren't here, they wouldn't be doing that. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Never forget that. Yeah. And then, and then it took the chief of police at the time uh, two weeks to figure out what to say to come on and explain it to me. Um, why? Then he had just become police chief. You remember that? Yeah, I do. Uh, and it was yeah. why they let that happen to you? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. that certainly is, the, is. I mean, really, there's probably some uh, ordinance regarding that kind of behavior, treating uh, news media a certain way. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. But, you, but you know, uh, you know, one thing I follow trends and so forth. And uh, if you've been watching the police here the last week, you got uh, Robert Fincher, the police chief there in the city. He obviously had the situation that occurred last weekend. He's on the ball. I give him uh, law enforcement really seems to be on the ball right now. Well, and these are new authorities. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. Um, of course, you, you can't ignore Sheriff Wayne Davis. He's had well over ten drug busts in the last two or three weeks. Um, and, and he says he's bringing down a generation of drug dealers, uh, the, the, like a family, the, the, the Cox family, uh, that has been generational uh, drug dealers. And he, I mean, he would, I mean, some some people compare him to Batman because they feel like he is. He is first of all, he's come out publicly saying that he had a he had a um, a sister that was overdosed in 2013, and that's been a driving force between you know him to to get on this fight. And um, it's, been, it's been kind of, you know, from a news person's perspective, it's an interesting covering. I've never seen such a surge of um, police uh, kind of cracking down. Well, it would be a good time also for individuals to say, you know, it's a different, uh, it's a different regime now, and we're seeing them behave in a different way. The, the city police is not up for election, so, no, you know, people yeah. can't be saying... And that's not fair to say that to the to the sheriff either. But for sure, the city uh, uh, city uh, chief of police is not up for election. He's doing trying to do his job. It could be too his involvement with the uh, with the county police. You know, you get encouraged when everybody is acting up when the county police that's are getting. What I think it is. I, I think I think when everybody's watching Wayne Davis uh, get on top of it, everybody doesn't want to be left behind. Well, I'm very very happy with you know the way things have transpired. And, you know, for as far as, you know, it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with me saying this, Charles. As far as we know, it's possible that the same people that are shooting on Princeton could have been the ones that were shooting over here in Fayette. And so, yeah. well, you know. That, that location there on Spring Street has always been a, a, an issue. I'm just, I get appalled by what happens at that location. Yeah. The mother out there getting the fire hose. You remember that? Yes. Yeah. And uh, the forest area is, is like that as well. Uh, yeah. You know, there are uh, cruisers that, you know, they're basically making rounds on Forest Street, Smith, Lake Street all the time. And, you know, there are a lot of normal people that live in that area. And a lot, you know, I just mentioned a moment ago, the 82-year-old lady that lives on uh, Forest Street. And, you know, 
that's to have that kind of stuff going on, you know, being shot, yeah. shots fired over there is, is very unnerving. And someone from Georgia, uh, Charles, at the beginning of the show, sent me a message saying that it encouraged him to get out and, you know, not be as afraid and try to get out and do something in the community. So it's... Uh, Don't you remember Jessica Griffith? You need to call her up because she, she gets fired up about this stuff. She, she, first of all, that people won't, won't talk to the authorities and give them the information they need to get to get people apprehended. Everybody keeps their mouth shut. And then she says the African-American community will go march but get nothing done. You remember that? Yes. Yeah. That was particularly... Uh, we were constantly hearing about Sandy Level and, and Logtown. You know,